and we wanted to talk to you today about your personal health journey to Hallelujah Acres and, and what you're doing now. Uh, this started way back for you uh, with a battle with IBS. Tell yes. us a bit about that. Well, what I found interesting is IBS is something that kind of slowly creeps up and you don't know that you have it, and it gets worse year by year. And so what I've noticed is back in my late 20s, when I would have a more stressful time in my life, all of a sudden I would have this urge and I would have to run to a bathroom and I would just actually get rid of everything that I had. And it didn't happen frequently, just enough for me to not understand what was happening. It wasn't as if there was a food that I ate that caused that. And then I saw through the years that that sense of urgency continued and it happened more frequently. And so it took probably 10 years, really, by the time I began to realize, oh my goodness, it seems as if everything that I'm eating is coming right through me. So it was a, it was a slow situation where I had periodic episodes and then it began to get worse to a place where I got to the point where, honest to goodness, I only just ate baby food out of a jar. Wow. That's how bad it was. So when did this start for you? You struggled for, for at least 10 years, I you did. just mentioned. It was in the late 20s when I was moving from California to Iowa that I began to really understand, why am I struggling here? I can't seem to get out of the restroom. Everything I'm eating turns into diarrhea, is what it did. And so it wasn't a matter of, some, when, you, when you look at IBS, that's called irritable bowel syndrome. Some people have the opposite effect where they just aren't able to have an elimination. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't that way. I was the other way. And so it started in my late 20s. By the time I was in my mid-30s, it became quite, quite difficult to eat anything. So by this time, you had uh, a couple of girls, and it must have made just everyday life pretty hectic. It, it made it very challenging. And the more stress that I found myself under, the worse the conditions became. And so there was a period in time in my mid-30s when I actually was starting graduate school, and it was an hour and a half drive to graduate school. And I'm not kidding. I would have to stop at least three times on the way to graduate school. And, and the only reason I'd have to stop is because I couldn't make it otherwise. And, and, so, and I ended up becoming very, very, very thin. Uh, a size two, if, if, if you know what I mean, hung on me. That's how thin I became. And I didn't understand this. I felt sicker when I ate the raw vegetables. So I tried to eat, I tried to eat almost anything I could. But I didn't eat the raw vegetables in their right state. I would eat them whole. And my poor little, my poor little colon wasn't ready for that. And so I didn't give it what it needed because I didn't know what to do. In fact, the irony of it all is I would eat more bread because I thought that was going to be more tender and gentle on my stomach. And a colonoscopy came back and there was no gluten sensitivity. There was no celiac issue. It really wasn't that. It was just a matter. And I've learned since then that IBS, Crohn's disease, um, all these inflammatory bowel diseases, from what I understand now, it's really just a reflection of your immune system. And so, for some reason, my immune system just became weaker and weaker and weaker. And from that, the irritable bowel uh, disease came. And I had hap that happened so frequently for so many years that I began to develop a malabsorption issue. In other words, I couldn't keep any food in me long enough for my body to be able to retain and use the nutrients. So, it was, uh, unfortunately, a sidekick or a side effect from the IBS was uh, fibromyalgia. And, and this was back in the mid-90s. And I'll never forget when I went to the doctor, the doctor suggested I see a psychiatrist because he didn't understand that this incredible searing pain in my back by my shoulder blades in between them really meant something. He, he really thought it was in my head. And I talked with other people that have fibromyalgia but didn't, didn't get it diagnosed because that was just not a typical type of illness back in the mid-90s. So you're in pain, you're not able to eat, your size two and clothes are hanging on you. Mm -hmm. You must be concerned at this point. Were you, were you afraid for your health or for your life? Yes. There were times when I would, I would have to sleep on, on a chair in the living room because I couldn't lay on a bed, night after night. And it was kind of interesting because this is such a unique society that we live in. People kept coming up to me going, boy, you look so good. You're so thin. And, and I knew I wasn't feeling well, and I knew I couldn't eat. And I thought, 
Well, you know, I, I may look really good. I guess size two is supposed to make you look really good in this society, but I sure didn't feel well. My energy level was poor. I was in graduate school. I was scared. And so I would many times go to the Lord and I'd say, okay, Lord, I need help. I don't understand what's happening here. I'm trying so hard not to eat bad foods, but it seems as if whatever food I'm eating becomes bad. So at what point, you mentioned you had a colonoscopy, so obviously you went to uh, regular medical doctors and tried to figure it out. At what point did you figure, this is not working, I need to try something else? Well, I have to be honest with you, when I went to the medical doctors, they handed me a prescription and they said, here, this will assist you in your IBS. And I, my mind just wasn't ready to take a pill for something that I just didn't believe I needed a pill for, but I didn't know anything yet. I just knew in my heart it wasn't the direction I should go. So that unfortunately, that left me just searching, just searching. And it became so prevalent that a friend of mine, this illness and my, my lack of weight became so prevalent that a friend of mine actually took me to a church. He is a Seventh-day Adventist, and he took me to his church because he thought maybe this guy that was coming to be a speaker there might be of some benefit for him some way. And that's how I ended up learning about the Hallelujah Diet. It was through a friend who is a Seventh-day Adventist where Dr. Malcolmus was speaking. Oh, okay. That's how I learned. Interesting. It was one of those, okay, God, put me where you want me, and he did. So you discovered uh, Reverend Malcolmus, and did you decide, yes, this is it? Or did you say, well, I should just try this and see what happens? Where did it lead you? Well, I, I walked out of there... I, at the time, my daughter had been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and she was a very, very young little girl. She was about eight years old. And I thought, oh my goodness, between her and I, we are just in a world of hurt, and there's not much we can do about this. So I, I walked out of listening to Reverend Malcolmus thinking, okay, well, what do we have to lose? Is <laughs> really what I, I really thought. I didn't, I, I, the inspiration was there. Yes, that's why I went ahead and, and ordered a juicer, but 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 to be honest with you i didn't know what i was going whether this was going to work or not i can't say that i can honestly say well i don't know what else to do i have nowhere else to go and did you you, you tried it then how long did it take before you started noticing that maybe this was the answer well i learned that uh that i had to get i had to delay besides listening to him i went on the forums hallelujah acres had some awesome forums and so I learned so much from there. And I learned that eating a piece of raw vegetable probably wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done. But if I would have broken it up and grated it up and, and chopped it up and put it in a blender, I might have been better off. Okay, but so I helping your digestive know. system along. Yeah, I didn't know okay. any of that. So what we did is we just started with juicing. And then I started just steaming my vegetables. I didn't even know much about cooking or cutting up the raw yet. So I really pretty much went from baby food to juicing to steaming vegetables. And then I decided I was going to try very slowly to increase my raw vegetables, but it had to be in a very small, very little bit. And at what point did it start working? When did you notice a difference? Well, it took, golly, it took at least six months, probably closer to a year, before I can honestly say that I saw some significant enough improvements. It, it, I have to believe that my colon needed a lot of time to heal, and it wasn't going to happen overnight for me anyway. And you mentioned your daughter had arthritis. Uh, did that start improving as well at the same time? It took her six months. It did. She okay. was a lot younger, so I think in her case, rebuilding her immune system didn't take as long as it was for me. She had been on a lot of steroids because she had had some severe asthma issues. Of course, I was when she was young, I didn't know any better. I gave her dairy. Obviously, removing the dairy, giving her the nutritional support, the kids understood the value of salads rather quickly. And so they, they were in the kitchen with me, and they did a lot of food, food preparation with me. And, uh, and they remind me of that to this day. <laughs> well, good. Now they know what they're doing on their own, too, which they is great. Do. They do.